of Hebrews chapter 4. We've been preaching our series on prayer, and this uh, will probably be our last week before we get into a book study, but i uh, been preaching on prayer, and I've greatly enjoyed it. It's been a help to me. Do you know that uh, the preacher gets fed through his preaching, and that seems one of the strangest things in the world, but I've been helped, and I've been able to apply what the Scripture teaches, and I've been challenged by it. We've been preaching a lot about soul winning lately, and God has been taking the truths that we've been learning in Scripture from soul winning, and they've been applying to my life. I've been learning from it. The Lord's made me more effective as a result of it, and I trust that He's done the same for you as well. Well, we're in Hebrews chapter 4 this evening, and I'd like to read two verses, and then we're going to uh, do an overview of most of the chapter, but we really want to get to the, to the end of the chapter this evening. And so let's see if we could just read this morning verse, uh, verses 1 through 3, and then go down to verse 16. For we which have believed, or verse, verse 3, for we which have believed to enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And now look down with me, if you will, to verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may receive, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray and we'll ask the Lord's blessing on our service tonight. Heavenly Father, it's our prayer that you would speak to our hearts. God, I, I cannot, but you can. Lord, we know that even in this passage of Scripture we're looking at, we are told by your word that it, your word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, we need some working on us by that two-edged sword. We need some piercing. We need some discerning of our thoughts and intents. And we ask prayerfully that you would help us to understand your word tonight and that it would not simply be head knowledge, but it would be an understanding that would call upon us to live for you. Lord, from the simple truths that are in this passage of Scripture, may it be so that we learn how to obtain grace and mercy so that we can enter into rest. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in a... Uh, this passage of Scripture, if we were to study through the book of Hebrews, we would be fine to be right in the middle of the warning of the warning passage of Scripture not to harden your heart. And so one of the dangers for a believer, one of the dangers for a Christian, one of the things that believers are warned about is not to harden your heart. Now, we had in Sunday school today a quiz on the book of Hebrews, and one of the things in the quiz was the bonus points were to know the, the warning passages in the book of Hebrews, and so perhaps we're um, familiar with it, but one of the other elements on the quiz today was what was the theme of Hebrews? And um, always with fear and trepidation that I ask questions, uh, because, man, you think people get things sometimes that they don't, but let me just ask and for a volunteer to tell us what is the book of Hebrews about, so it'll bring us into our context this evening. Somebody here this evening, could you tell us what is the theme of the book of Hebrews? <coughs> Nick? Jesus Christ is better. Okay, uh, that's, a, that's an underlying theme through the book of Hebrews. Uh, what was the purpose of the book of Hebrews? Chuck, do you have something to add to that? Well, I, just gonna, I think it's better than... Just yes, people. okay. The, over, the underlying or overlying, it wouldn't even be underlining, the overall theme of the book of Hebrews is Jesus is better. And why is that important? What is the point of the book of Hebrews? Tony? They were going back into the, the old um, Judaism. Who's They? Yeah, what kind of believers? Jews. Jewish believers were what? We're going back into uh, putting their trust in the old law and the old uh, form of Judaism instead of... And why were they doing that? Uh, probably because of persecution. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, they were in a time of terrible persecution. And literally at the time that the, this letter was written to the Hebrew people, the, the circumstances that were happening... Whereas that it was just evident because of the Jewish revolts and because of the Rome's attitude toward Israel, it was evident that Rome was about to come and just annihilate the Jews. And that literally is what, was, what happened in about a year and a half to two years 
from the time that this letter was written. And so it was incredibly dangerous just being Jewish. And we asked in our Sunday school class, in, in the teen class this morning, it says, anything a Jew can do about his nationality? Was there anything he could do to change his nationality? And the answer to it is no. And so just because of the nationality to which he was born, he, had a, he was dangerous. And it was hard to be alive and be a Jew. Uh, they were about to be destroyed simply for being Jewish. And that was dangerous. But add to that, if you will, those Jews which came to Jesus Christ, who not only were in danger because of their nationality, they were in danger because their family turned against them as well. And their families, you, you receive Jesus as your Savior. Your family said, don't ever talk to us again. Uh, you're, you have a father, and he says, I don't have a son anymore. You're no longer my son. And uh, get out of our house. You have a job, and they say, you know what? You don't work for me anymore. And literally, your livelihood, everything that you had, on top of being under, undergoing political persecution because of your nationality, you had on top of it your own family turning against you. I don't know about you, but to most people, family is sort of important. And it's very hurtful when your family turns against you. It's just, a, uh, we, in, in many cases, many of us couldn't understand. We just would have a hard time relating to it. Having your father and your mother and your brothers and your sisters where they wouldn't even speak to you anymore and they hated you and they turned against you. And so one of the uh, things that was happening for these Christians who had experienced this uh, coming to Christ and being saved and, and uh, the, being redeemed, one of the things that they were doing, though, is they were just saying, I don't even know if it's worth it to be a Christian. It's just so hard. And it literally was hard. And so the book of Hebrews is a letter explaining to Hebrew Christians why it's worth it. Why it's worth it. Why not to go back? And so we saw, first of all, that if you go back into Judaism, well, the Jews worship angels. Is Jesus superior to the angels? Yes, he's God. He created the angels. Uh, you want to go back? You want to go back to Moses being your great later? Jesus is superior to Moses. You want to go back and, into the priesthood and, and have to pray through a priest and have to have somebody offer a temporary sacrifice that is only as good for as long as it's offered? And it has to be redone every single year. And the priest has to stand because he's never finished with the work of the priesthood. Uh, Jesus is better than that priest because he offered a once-for-all sacrifice. And he sat down on the right end of the throne of God and he was finished. And he's there continually making intercession for us. And so you have a better priest. He's better than Aaron. He's better than Melchizedek. And he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's not just the beginner. He's the finisher. And so the book of Hebrews is this challenging letter saying that, Christian, you may be suffering, but it's worth it. And at the end of Hebrews chapter 10, one of the warnings that you find is that the Jews are about to be destroyed. You go back into Judaism and you'll just be killed for nothing. I would tell you something, Christian. If I'm going to die for something, I want it to be dying for something that's truth and dying for something that's life-changing and dying for something that's worthwhile. And do you know that everybody dies anyway? And it, it, you know, it, it's something, it's a 100% statistic. You know, we preached a, few, a couple weeks ago how that it is easier, uh, it's easier to die for Jesus than it is to live for Jesus. Dying's not so difficult, living is. And uh, I'll tell you, anybody can die. Everybody's done it up to this point in time. And barring the coming of the Lord Jesus, which I fully expect to be very soon, but barring that, we'll die too. And so it's more important to be right with Jesus than it is to be right with people uh, who aren't, aren't, don't know Jesus. And so that's sort of the theme of the book of Hebrews, but I want to look at a theme very specifically this evening, and that would have to do with this matter of rest. Now, we're in the middle of the warning passage saying not to harden your hearts, and the illustration for people that have hardened their hearts is the nation of Israel. And specifically, the consequence of their hard hearts was that because they had hardened their hearts,